Hi, and welcome to my quick guide of the quest Shiloh Village. The quest requirement is Jungle Potion, and the stat requirements are 20 Crafting and 32 Agility. For the items needed are a spade, a lit candle, a rope, a hammer, a chisel, and one bronze wire, as well as three regular bones. For the recommended items are about 2, 3 or 4 stamina potions, depending on how many teleports you have unlocked already in this area, as well as some weight reducing armor. Also some food, armor, weapon and potions to kill 3 combat 90s, as well as to pass various monsters, which some of them are poisonous, up until combat 73. Now in this quest, you will need to defeat 3 monsters of around combat 90, which are undead. So if you have level 39 magic, be sure to use the crumble undead spell. But since I don't have this spell unlocked yet, then I am kind of stuck with fire strike. Now since we are here in Karamja, be sure to also bring along one antidote or an anti-poison, as well as also one empty inventory slot at the start of this quest. For the teleports. I would suggest you to bring along one to any gnome glider. I will be using a ring of dueling. If you don't have access to gnome gliders, then just replace it with some extra time running around Karamja. Also two teleportation methods to Taibo Wanai Village. If you have completed the quest Taibo Wanai Trio, then you're able to use the Taibo Wanai Village teleport scrolls, which are extremely helpful during this quest. But I don't think many people have completed that quest before completing Shala Village. So I will be bringing along a Ardoin cloak with 30 GP to get myself back to Taibo Wanai village. One teleportation method to the Fairwing DKR, which is located all the way northeast of Karamja, next to the Karambuan fishing shops. If you don't have access to Fairwings just like me, then just bring along one extra gnome glider teleport. One teleportation method to the fairy ring of CKR, which is just north of Shiloh Village, pretty close to the nature altar. If you don't have access to fairy rings, once again, bring along one gnome glider teleport. And if you don't have access to those, food and staminas. And then also one teleportation method out of here after the quest is completed. Where to start this quest is right here at the entrance of Shiloh Village, south of Karamja, you should know where that is. Let's talk to Mosul Ray and select option 1 three times. And then select option 4 and then 2. And he will give you a weapon belt. If you have completed the quest Type 1 I Trio, then use your first teleport scroll to get yourself over there. If you don't, then run all the way to Trifitus from the Jungle Potion quest in Taibo Wanai village. After a nice run, once you've reached Trifitus, let's use the weapon belt on him. And then select option 2, 2, 1, 3, and then 1 again. Next, let's run east, or if you have the gliders unlocked, Let's teleport to any dome glider and take it to Karamja. I think it's faster to use a gnome gliders. You could run all the way east and just cross the lock, but that's effort. 
Once we've arrived to the eastern side of Karamja, just run west. And keep running west, slightly northwest, but mostly west, until you see a river. Until you see a darker black side on, with some rocks on your minimap. Here, just a bit northwest. Here you'll find a mound of earth. Right click and search. Next, use your spade on it. Then you should use your lit candle on it once it is have been excavated or something like that. Select yes, you will lose your candle. Then use click to continue. Then use your rope. Be sure it's gone. Then search it to climb down. Next, let's run southwest until you see a pillar sign on your minimap. We need to stand. We need to stand southwest of it, and there should find some cave in. Search it. Click to continue and select option one real quickly. So you can get here real fast without being attacked by the undead creatures. If they do, you just try again. Once you are here, just run north. Keep running north until you see a curve going east. At that curve, go to the western side. Behind this wall, you should find some loose rocks. Search it to find scroll number one. Select yes to try. And if you fail, just try again. Once you have the tattered scroll, read it. Yes, I would like to read it. Close it, and then continue following this dungeon. Keep following this dungeon until you see two paths into a small room southwest. Go inside of that room, and there should find, south of the table, the broken table, some old sacks. Search in it to find the Crumpet Scroll. Say yes to read it again. Next, let's go north. To grab the final item, they should find a Gallows. Do not be attacked by all the undead ones. Just run all the way north, north of the Gallows. So none of the undead will be able to attack you. Right click and search in it. Click to continue and select option 2 to be able to get the Xadius corpse. Now we will need to use these three items on Trifitus, so let's teleport to him. I will be using the Ardoin cloak, teleporting myself to Ardi, traveling with the boat to Brimhaven and running south. But if you don't have access to teleports or something like that, then you could run all the way through the dungeon again, try to build a raft using your chisel maybe and your hammer and try to get out that way but that is a quite long route so I will just rather teleport. I'll see you back at Trufitus. Once you have returned to Trufitus, let's use the... what well, doesn't really matter, you just need to use all three items on him. Alright, use a second scroll. And I use a corpse on Trufitus, and then you should select option 1. Next, go a bit west until you see a grey statue just south of the anvil and the farm sign. Stand in front of it, just south of it, and then just bury Zedius' corpse, or Zedimus' corpse, and then a ghost will appear. It will talk to you and give you a bone shard. Once you have this, let's return to Trufitus and use it on him. 
then select option 1 three times. Next, we will need to go to Karn Island, which is located just south of Taibo Wanai Village, which is the very fun place where you will need to go for hard clues, where there is a very annoying bridge, which you fail quite often. So just keep running south, basically halfway back to uh, Mansell Ray at the start of the quest. South of the hunter sign where you can hunt grocs and south of the CKR fairing, they'll find a bridge on your west. Try to climb the rocks, depending on your I don't know what is your success rate. If you fail, try again. Next, try to cross the bridge and fingers crossed, fingers crossed, damn. If you fail, yeah, you already know the answer. All right, once you've made it to Karn Isle, congratulations. Let's go north and there we should find some well-stacked rocks. Right-click and search, and then try to get inside of the hole. Yes, please. If you fail, try again. Next, once you're inside, let's go south and there should find the dolmen. Search in it and be sure to have three empty inventory slots because you will get some three items. We get a sword pummel, a location crystal, and some notes. Next, let's use the chisel on the sword pummel, which you've just gotten, and you should craft it into some beads, then use your bronze wire on it to make beads of the dead. Equip it. Now, if you want to get out of here, then you can just simply teleport away, which I've told you to bring along at the start of this quest, but if you didn't, then you can also just try to climb these rocks, but be sure to have at least 11 or higher hit points, because if you fail, you will surely die if you are like a 10 hit points pure. This is how I died once on my 10 HP account. Next, it is already time for the boss fight. So let's teleport to any bank and prepare for the boss fight, which is pretty easy, but you do need to pass a lot of aggressive level 73s. But if you think you are already prepared, then just teleport to the fair wing DKP, which is the fair wing which is very close to the fishing spot where you can fish raw crumb ones. If you don't have access to fair rings, then just use the gnome glider back to Kramja and run following the coast all the way north. You could also just run all the way there, but... All right, once you have made it to the most northeastern part of Karamja, let's go a bit west, southwest, until you see some bright green palms. Stand north of it and then search them to find some hidden doors. Try to search the carved doors. You should meet some key. Use your chisel on the bone shard, then use your key on the carved doors and then enter the entrance. Next, be sure to have equipped your Beats of the Dead and then open the Ancient Metal Gate, just south of you. And then just climb down the rocks. Now, be warned, there are a lot of Comma 73s here. Uh, let's run southwest, first west, then south. Then when the path splits, go west again. And you've made it to the boss room. Use your bones, three bones, regular bones, on the door. And then just open the door. Ow. Okay. Just try again. And now it is time for the boss fight. So be sure that you have your ranged or magic attack method ready. 
search the dolmen and should spawn the first form of the spirit with a difficult name. Just stand on the other side of the dolmen until he is stuck. Ah, uh, yeah, it's already stuck. There we go. The max hit should be 10. If you used Crumble and Death, then you will have finished this boss fight a lot faster than me. Once you've defeated the zombie, a combat 68 skeleton will appear. Once you've defeated the skeleton using the same method, a combat 93 ghost will appear. Defeat him once again using the same method, and you've basically completed the quest. Oh yeah, you can unequip your beat to the dead for some more accuracy. Ooh, there we go. The boss fight has been completed. The bosses are defeated. You will see the corpse appear on the dolmen. Be sure to take it. And then we'll need to go back to Karn Island, the one with the most annoying bridge. I think the fastest way would be to use a known glider once again to get back to the eastern side of Kramja, because going through that dungeon is quite annoying, so... I think teleporting is much easier. If you have access to fairy rings, be sure to use the code CKR because Karn Island is just next to it. If you don't, then use maybe the gnome glider or just run back through the dungeon and run all the way to Karn Isle. If you don't have access to fairy rings, then you will need to cross this lock here on the western side, just next to the gnome glider, the broken one, and run southwest.
Oh, hoo -hoo. bastards. Yeah. Once you've reached to Car Island, let's go back to the well stacked rocks. Let's return to the. Let's return to the dark hole, which it says there itself. Let's go back to the dolmen where you found the sword pummel and the locating crystal. Use Resilius corpse on it to complete your quest. Let's speak to the spirit and congratulations, you've completed Shadow Village quest. You are awarded with two quest points, 3875 crafting experience, access to Shallow Village, access to the gem mines. In Shallow Village, in the northwestern corner, there are gem rocks, which requires 40 mining and of course also an enchanted glory. To be able to make that mining method viable, you now also have the ability to travel from Brimhaven to Shallow Village by cart, by paying Vingro and also vice versa, so if you have enough coins, you can also travel from Shire Village to Brimhaven. And the final reward here is that you can use all of these scrolls and other quest stuff, and everything combined, he will buy it for an amount of 2,000, no, 1,900 GP. All right, this was my quick guide of the quest Shire Village. Hopefully it has helped. Subscribe, rate, and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.